the right diet can cut your proteinuria by 30% without any medication changes. But most IG nephropathy patients don't know what to eat. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly the eating plan I give every patient in my practice. Simple, sustainable, and kidney friendly. Welcome back to the channel, everyone. I'm Dr. Sean Hashmi, board certified nephrologist and obesity medicine specialist. Today, I'm sharing the diet strategy that makes your medications work better and protects your kidney function. Now, this isn't a restrictive diet where you starve. It's a sustainable approach based on the latest kidney nutrition research. Let's start with the foundation. Now, before we continue, if you're new to the series, please hit that subscribe button. I share practical kidney health tips weekly that could change your outcome. Today, we're going to cover the kidney-friendly plate, the number one dietary change you must make on supplements, fact versus hype, and the two things that aggressively accelerate kidney damage. All right, let's dive in. Why diet matters. Let me be direct about this. There is no pill that can fix a poor lifestyle. I see patients all the time who are on the best medications, maximal dose ACE inhibitors, SGLT2 inhibitors, even Neficon, but their proteinuria stays high. When I dig deeper, I find they're eating five plus grams of sodium per day. They're taking ibuprofen when they have a headache. They're eating out every meal. They're not tracking their blood pressure. Medications are powerful, but they're only half the equation. Lifestyle is the other half. Think of it this way. If medications are the offense in protecting your kidneys, lifestyle is the defense. You're going to need both. There's a study published in the 2020 Clinical Journal of the American Society of Nephrology, and it showed that patients who combine medications with dietary sodium restriction, cutting out your salt, had 30% better protein in the urine reduction than patients on medications alone. 30% just from diet. If you're watching this and thinking, I'll just rely on my meds, you're leaving kidney protection on the table. Now, if you do one thing from this video, let it be this. Lower your sodium intake to less than 2 grams per day. This is the single most important dietary change for IgA nephropathy patients. Why does sodium intake matter so much? Well, high sodium intake raises blood pressure, which damages your glomeruli. And it also reduces the effectiveness of your medications like ACE inhibitors or ARB. And then it increases protein in the urine directly, even if your blood pressure doesn't change. The 2021 KDGO guidelines say target sodium intake less than 2 grams per day, which equals about 5 grams of salt. For reference, a teaspoon of salt is about 2.3 grams of sodium. You're aiming for less than 1 teaspoon of sodium total for the entire day. Where does the sodium hide? Most people think, I don't add any salt to my food, so I'm fine. That is incorrect. 77% of the dietary sodium comes from processed foods and restaurant meals. The worst offenders and soups, 800 to 1200 milligrams per serving. Deli meats, 500 to 900 milligrams per two ounces. Restaurant meals, worst offenders, 1500 to 3000 milligrams per entree. Breads and rolls, 150 to 300 milligrams per slice. Cheese is about 200 to 400 milligrams per ounce. Frozen meals, 600 to 1800 milligrams per meal. Sauces and condiments, about 200 to 500 milligrams per tablespoon. How to hit your 2 gram sodium target? Step number one, the most important, cook at home. This is what's going to give you the total control. Step number two, read the labels. Look for foods that have less than 140 milligrams of sodium per serving. And step number three is rinse canned foods. You see, rinsing canned beans or vegetables can remove about 40% of the sodium. And step number four is to use salt-free seasoning. Mrs. Dash, uh, garlic powder, lemon juice, herbs, spices, they all add flavor with zero sodium. And then number five is ask for no salt at restaurants. Most chefs that I've seen at restaurants will accommodate. Now, the 80-20 rule. 
be strict 80% of the time. If you go out to eat once a week, it's okay to have higher sodium at that one meal, as long as all the other 20 meals are under control during the week. What is your biggest challenge with reducing sodium? Let me know. Is it restaurant food, packaged foods, cooking at home? Let's try to see if we can solve this problem together. Let's talk about the kidney-friendly plate. This is a simple concept that can help you to eat better. Remember, half your plate, 50%, should be non-starchy vegetables. What are they? Leafy greens, spinach, kale, lettuce, cruciferous vegetables like broccoli, cauliflower, Brussels sprouts, peppers, cucumbers, zucchini, tomatoes, green beans, asparagus, cabbage. Why? Because they're low in sodium, potassium, and phosphorus, and they're high in fiber and antioxidants. And then one quarter of your plate should be lean proteins. You're trying to aim for about 0.8 grams per kilogram of ideal body weight per day. For a 70 kilogram, which is about 154 pound person, that's about 56 grams of protein per day. What are the best sources? Egg whites, skinless chicken or turkey, fish such as salmon, cod, tilapia, tofu or tempeh, legumes like beans, lentils, of course, rinse if they're canned. Now, the important part of this is we're aiming for moderate protein. Remember, too much protein, especially animal protein, can increase protein in the urine. But too little protein can lead to muscle loss and malnutrition. So balance is key. One quarter of your plate should be whole grains or starchy vegetables. What are examples? Brown rice, quinoa, farro, sweet potatoes, which are moderate in potassium, whole wheat pasta, oatmeal. And the reason is, is because they provide energy without the excessive sodium. What about low sodium fruit on the side? Well, most IG nephropathy patients don't have high potassium until later stages. CKD4, CKD5, sometimes even as CKD3B. But if you choose, think about apples, berries, grapes, pineapples, watermelons. On the flip side, try to avoid bananas, oranges, avocados, dried fruits, or at least minimize those. And then when it comes to drinks, water is your best friend. You want to aim for adequate hydration based on your urine output. If your EGFR is normal, You can drink when you're thirsty about six to eight cups per day, but sometimes thirst is not a good marker as we get older. So look at your urine. You're looking at a pale lemonade color to tell you if you're hydrated. The stuff you really want to avoid though is sodas, which are high in sodium and phosphorus, energy drinks, which are high in potassium, and excessive caffeine. Now the DASH and Mediterranean diets, these are both excellent diets for IG nephropathy. They are plant predominant, low in sodium, high in anti-inflammatory foods, and they're proven to lower blood pressure. What's a sample day? Breakfast, oatmeal with berries and almond butter, no added salt. Lunch, grilled chicken salad with olive oil and lemon dressing, no added salt. Dinner, baked salmon, steamed broccoli, quinoa, once again, seasoned with herbs, no salt. What's your total sodium for the day? 1,500 milligrams. All right, let's switch over to supplements. What's the fact versus hype? Patients always ask me about supplements constantly. And here's the truth. Most supplements for IG nephropathy have either weak or mixed evidence. Let's break down the most common ones. Omega-3 fatty acids. The claim is it reduces inflammation and protein in the urine. The evidence is mixed. Some early studies show benefit but a 2016 Cochrane review found no clear benefit in reducing protein in the urine or slowing the progression of chronic kidney disease. My take, not harmful, may be helpful when it comes to cardiovascular benefits. We've talked about the brain benefits of this, including mood. Therefore, if you take it, not a big deal. It's not a game changer for IG nephropathy. If you want to try it, remember the dose is one to two grams of EPA and DHA per day. Don't expect miracles, but there are other things it can help. Next, vitamin D. The claim is it supports immune function and kidney health. The evidence, if you're deficient, yes, supplements, but mega doses don't provide 
extra benefit. Why take? You can get your vitamin D level checked. If it's low, supplement it to bring it into the normal range, about 30 to 50 nanograms per mil. But you don't necessarily need to take high doses without a deficiency. And if you end up taking it, consider taking K2, the MK7 version with it. Now, what about probiotics? The claim is they improve gut health and reduce faulty IgA production. The evidence, this is a hot research topic, it's emerging, but not yet conclusive. IgA nephropathy, we talked about how it starts in the gut, and this makes theoretical sense. There's a 2022 pilot study that showed modest protein in the urine reduction with specific probiotic strains. My take, it's low risk, probably helpful, but more research is still needed. And if you want to try it, choose strains like lactobacillus, bifidobacterium. They're available over the counter. What I end up telling my patients is, look, if you have a deficiency, you should definitely look at supplements. Some supplements may be better than others, but if you have a choice, spend your money on whole foods. Get a good blood pressure monitor. Get a consultation with a kidney dietitian. All right. Now let's switch gears and talk about two things that destroy kidneys. And these are things that very aggressively accelerate kidney damage. First one is NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. What are examples? Ibuprofen goes by the name of Advil, Motrin, Naproxen, Aleve, Aspirin, not in low doses, but in high doses. And why are they dangerous? Because NSAIDs, they will reduce the blood flow to the kidneys and can cause acute kidney injury. This is especially more important if you're already on an ACE inhibitor or an ARB, and they also increase protein in the urine. What should you do if you have pain? Use Tylenol. It's kidney safe in normal doses. For chronic pain, though, talk to your doctor about physical therapy, topical treatments, low-dose muscle relaxants, but try to never take NSAIDs regularly if you have Ig nephropathy. Number two is smoking. Why is it dangerous? Smoking accelerates all forms of chronic kidney disease. It damages blood vessels, increases inflammation, raises blood pressure, increases protein in the urine. What's the data? Smokers with IgA nephropathy progress to kidney failure two to three times faster than non-smokers. What to do? Quit. I know it's easier said than done, but do focus on quitting. Use nicotine replacement therapy. Talk to your doctor about Chantix or Wellbutrin. Join a support group. Quitting smoking is literally the single highest impact non-medication intervention you can take. All right. Now, question for everyone. If your biggest struggle is sodium and that's where you're really trying to lower, pop it in the comments. What are you struggling? What's so hard about it? What's your other struggle? If you're a smoker, what have you tried? What's not working? Now, I know this feels overwhelming. You're tracking labs. You're taking multiple medications. You're monitoring your blood pressure daily. And now you're supposed to cook every meal from scratch and count sodium and everything. Listen, I get it. But here's the same thing that I tell my patients. You don't have to be perfect. You have to be consistent. Keep in mind the 80-20 rule applies to everything in life. If you nail it 80% of the time, you'll see dramatic results. And you're not alone. This community with the YouTube channel is there to help you to be successful. There's also the IG Nephropathy Foundation. There's Nefcure Kidney International. Reddit's got a kidney disease channel. You want to connect with others who understand this journey. Remember, managing IG nephropathy is as much about mental health as it's about physical health. Be kind to yourself. Now you know the mechanism. You know the labs to track. You know the treatments that work and the diet that supports them. Now it's time to put it all together in one single actionable plan. That's going to be episode number six. In episode six, I'm going to give you the five-step action plan. It's a simple, clear roadmap to protect your kidney starting from today. And it's going to be a culmination of everything we've covered in this series. Here's what I need you to do. If this video gave you practical diet strategy, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for weekly 
evidence-based kidney health content, longevity content, content on metabolic health that I try to explain in simple terms and share this with someone managing kidney disease. This eating plan works for all forms of chronic kidney disease. Next, watch episode six. It's coming out in just a couple of days. You'll have the link in the description to bring everything together and drop your biggest challenge for trying to change your diet in the comments below. I want to thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Don't forget to practice gratitude and kindness to others and to yourself by taking care of your health. I'll see everyone next time.